setting up your custom theme generator. Um, the first step is separated into four, four subjects. We're going to review these subjects all together. Okay, and you're also going to see that these four subjects are in a way all connected, and you're and and it's really cool what I'm about to show you. Okay, so follow me, and trust me, you're going to do very well. So the first step is organization. Organization is extremely important because you're going to create a lot of templates, and you're going to have to save this data of templates somewhere. So we want to. Like I say here, we want to have a central place to store all the links that we have created. So I use personally a spreadsheet. Why? Because you can look, you can also use Excel. I use a spreadsheet because um, a spreadsheet, you can share it with your partner, with your colleague. Um, you can edit it. Somebody else can edit it at the same time. Everything is live through a Google spreadsheet. So I would recommend using spreadsheets. I only use spreadsheets. Okay. Um, on the spreadsheet, and I'm going to show you uh, the Google document, I include four things. I include a theme name, a theme ID, a theme URL, and a theme registration link. We're going to review that right now. Okay. First of all, let me just show you my spreadsheet. So you can see theme name, the name of the theme, the theme ID, which is the site ID, and the theme URL, which is uh, the domain name, in other words, okay, under my subdomain. Uh, and of course, the theme registration that we're going to review towards the end of this step. So before we even before I even show you how to gather that data, let me show you how to brand your platform. So a few tips that I want to uh, I want to share is in regards to branding. Branding is extremely, extremely important. Number one, what we need to do is we need to sign in to design dash editor.com, which is in other words, webidoo.com, but for white label. Okay. Um, it basically hides the fact that you're using webidoo. Okay. But it's a webidoo. It's just another domain on webidoo. It's white label webidoo. So let's go in design dash editor.com. And we're all going to do this live one step at a time. Okay. So um, webinars at gmail.com. There you go. Signed in. So I'm signed in. Okay. And I see that I have created three accounts. Okay. Cool. You see here, this is my main custom theme generator. Okay. This is my main website. And also here, you're going to see that I have created other templates. Okay. So. The first step is to log in to designeditor.com as if you're logging into webidoo.com. Second of all, you need to update your logos. It's extremely, extremely important to update your logos because when a client will be going to the registration link, uh, he's going to see your logo. Okay. Make sure you update your dashboard with your, uh, your logo. So to do that, you go to your dashboard and then you go on my branding tab and then you upload your logos. It also tells you the size. Uh, the preferred size to upload, upload your logos. Uh, I'm just showing you a screenshot of my personal uh, account so you can see exactly what I did. Okay, so my branding tab and you upload your logos. Next, a few tips, okay, a few important things to consider. First thing is removing Webidoo source code from any website that you create or theme, okay? It's important because sometimes you're gonna have clients that would that would actually look into the source code of the website that they have created and they're going to see Webidoo, and you don't want that. You want to hide Webidoo. You don't want to tell your clients, okay, that you're using Webidoo as a tool, okay? Um, it's mainly you. It's your platform. It's your business. You. It's not something that you're sharing, okay? So you need to remove Webidoo from all referenced HTML, HTML code, okay? To do that, you still stay on my branding tab from your dashboard, okay? And let me just show you right now my branding. Well, let me show you my main account. Uh, what do you do? And there you go, my branding. So I have my dashboard logo, my login logo, like I showed before, remove Webidoo from HTML code. 
Okay. Also, another important um, important note: allow CMS users to connect your domain. CMS users are your clients. Now, why is it important? Because you have a lot of clients that purchase domains and don't want to share this certain data, which is very private, with you. Because generally, you need to connect the domain for them. But now we added the fact that they can connect their own domain by themselves without going through you all the time. So at the same time, um, they don't need to share this personal uh, information with you. And second of all, you don't need to deal with connecting domains for every client that comes in and wants to connect a domain. Okay. And of course, publish under your subdomain. Every um, from I th from the team and up, from the team and agency, and of course enterprise, uh, you have the ability to publish all your website and all your themes under your subdomain. Okay, you can see here. If I go back, publish sites under your own domain name. So if let's say I have here, what would be the template generator? I'm just going to preview it, and you're going to see what do uh, template gen dot .com. Okay. Everything is under my subdomain. So it's important to set it up before you even start creating your templates. Okay, let's uh, let's have another example. No, this is what we do. I decided to what we do. Uh, killer homepage. Here you go. Killer homepage. .com. Okay, so every website is under your own subdomain. So it's extremely important to set it up before you even create any website, any theme whatsoever. All right. Next, what we have is creating your theme. Now we're going to go over your creating your theme. Creating your theme, you can create your theme. Uh, you can create your personal theme, or you can create a webby theme that are that's already existent. You just need to make sure that you remove anything that is referencing webby, whether it's design-wise or of course code-wise which is exactly what we did on our previous uh, step, okay? Um, so you're going to see how every, also how every step is all connected together. This step, this is just one step, okay? It's just separated into four sections into understanding how every step one by one works, okay? So what, now that we have uh, created a spreadsheet for, or, uh, for organizing our data, and also that we have rebranded our platform, now we're going to do what we're going to do is create our theme. So number one, you go to your dashboard and you create a new site. So let's do it together. Create a new site. And we're going to take something from our inspiration. Let's say, there you go, global leader. Let's go back and follow the instructions. Next, we're going to go back and then we're going to go to the site settings. Okay, so let's go back. I have created, let's go back. Here we go. So I have created. Now let's go to site settings. Now that I'm on site settings, what do we need to do? Name the theme, the site theme. Okay, so site title is the name of the theme. So let's call it global leader theme. Click on save. There you go. Next, what do we need to do? Add your custom subdomain. To add your custom subdomain, you need to go to domain and email, add a new domain, global uh, dash uh, leader dash theme dot your subdomain. This one is webidus.com. Click on add, which adds it, and then save it. And then what do we need to do? Republish. Well, publish only once because we never published it. I'm just going to close this. And now we're going to publish. Amazing. So I have three types of data here. I have my theme name my theme ID, site ID, in other words, and my theme URL, which is globalleadertheme.webidu.com. Okay, there you go. 
Next, the registration link. You also at the you all saw at the beginning that when I clicked on the pricing plan and I paid, it redirected me to the registration link of that specific theme template, right? So where do we find those templates? We found find those templates here. You need to go to your dashboard and then go to the share tab. Under the share tab, you're going to see something like this on the screenshot that I have. Um, attached here copy link okay now you're gonna see everything is white labeled there's no webidu.com the even the URL you're gonna see dashboard.designeditor.com slash um, login.aspx you copy this link and you save it copy paste it into your spreadsheet so this is exactly what we're going to do okay so I have my spreadsheet here I don't have global leader so theme name what is the theme name? Let's start working. Theme name is global leader theme. Or global leader, however you want. Theme ID is the site ID that is located here. There you go. I'm just going to paste here. Theme URL is the URL of the theme that we have created, which is Global Leader Theme. There you go. I'm just going to take out the version one. Okay. And the theme registration link, which we said where is located on my dash on my share th uh, share tab. Let's check the global leader. So every time that you go through one of those uh, sites, choose the website website's initial design, you're going to be sent to a different type of registration link. So as you can see, dashboard.designeditor.com, log in. This is exactly global leader. You copy this link, you go back, and you paste it on your spreadsheet. This is extremely important because you're going to have to reuse them a lot, okay? You will need to assign them. On my website, you can see that the build it or the preview, the preview leads to the URL. The build it you, uh, brings you to the pricing. I select the pricing, I pay, and then it brings me to that registration link, okay? So let's just have a quick review on what we just said. So theme name, you find it on the site title. Then the theme ID is the site ID, as you can see here. The theme URL is the URL, the URL that we have created. And of course, the theme registration link, which is exactly what we just saw right now, is under the share tab. And you're going to see copy link. You copy and you save that data into your spreadsheet. OK, now. With everything that we have uh, saved right now and we have explained, what we need to do is we need to map out how the user will um, be led to his account, okay? And what effect it will have on the user and what effect it will have to you, all right? So let's map it out. One, the user clicks on the registration link. Okay, what happens when he clicks on the registration link? As you saw, he clicked on the button, he purchased, and then he redirected to the registration link. So the user will register through the registration link with your own branding, okay? Um, we don't ask that you put your login logo for nothing, okay? If I go on share, let's say, This website, for example, let's open it here. We're going to see my logo. Let me just log out. There you go. My logo. OK. Next, the user fills the information like I did before with uh, Damien S and submits. And then what happens? The template is created. But what happened? What happens when the user submits and the template is created? On the user side, the user can do whatever he wants, edit, uh, change, modify, even publishes as much as he wants, uh, whenever, however he wants it. 
he he wants to uh, use the template that he has created. But what happens on your side? So on your side, you get an email from our support team saying that a new CMS user has been registered to your account, right? And then what happens? Your template is automatically created with the site site ID uh, and the CMS login, uh, the CMS uh, the the user CMS info. Okay, let's have a look. Let's go to my design editor. Okay, my sites. If I'm not mistaken, this is the John one. The next one should be the Damien one. So you see, Damien. This is the password that I can change. Last name is Damien. Whatever. And the phone is this. And this is the capabilities and everything that I'm allowing that specific user to do. 